What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. Today is what is it? September <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> September. Great start. And guys, Brian Bayo is out here losing fantasy baseball leagues. Did any of you start Brian Bayo? I don't have him anywhere. No, no, thank goodness. It's a no for me, dog. Yeah. There is one person out there that started Brian Bayo in a very, very clutch situation, and that would be our guy Doc. Who's in our fantasy baseball home league championship game? Please give him a fat negative twenty one. Please or was it, lose. It was something like that. Oh my gosh, man! He texted me earlier, and he was like, "I am never drafting Brian Bayo again." He like is is that single handedly to give up eight earned runs and in three innings pitched championship week? That is absolutely brutal. I Along mean, with, uh, so yeah, I was like eight hits and four walks. So, I mean, it's not, it's a points lead, but man, I, I've really heard of worse. Right. I've heard of worse. I've heard a negative 27 in championship week. Uh, I think I had that against you. Is that Martin year. Perez? Uh, no, uh, no, that, that was, uh, Pablo Lopez. Uh, I think, uh, in the year what? you beat me in the championship. I'm Pretty sure it was Martin Perez. Was it Martin Perez? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, but it was. Th- it was that season, and I think you beat me by like thirty some points, and I got like negative twenty seven on that start. Uh, that would have been my third championship, and uh, I haven't been back in the championship round <laughs> since then. So you 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 took it, and I blame that man for 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 losing that championship. I blame Martin Perez. Well, Martin Perez is now on the other person's team that's facing Eric, and he got him 20 points today. Go, Martin Perez. There it yeah. is. Right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. It's the championship week in a lot of leagues, uh, wrapping up the rest of the regular season here. So we will touch on just a little bit of maybe two-star pitchers you could try down the stretch here for the last part of the season or some hot hitters that might be worth picking up. We're also going to talk about MVP baseball, potentially the best video game of all time some of us think so others may not and then if we have time we may try to squeeze in a game but we're going to try to pack in as much as we can in the time we're with you guys tonight uh but i want to start out of course with the actual fantasy baseball talk that i think people really need at this point in the time in the season the last again seven to ten days of the year left and marty did a good job of putting together some two-star pitchers down the stretch here that have are in line for two starts, but it's going to be a question of if you trust them for your fantasy team. And the first guy that Marty has on the list is John means who is at Cleveland and versus Boston, Boston, who scored five runs today, but gave up 15 Cleveland is a very hot and cold offense. Usually cold. Most of the time, John means he's coming back from a long layoff, obviously has had a couple outings under his belt here. Marty, what are you doing with John means? I was going to bring up uh, specifically how those teams are against lefties, and I, and I will in a moment. Now, John Means, first off, it's great to have him back. Um, I was a believer in him maybe about two years ago at this point, so I was interested to see how he's doing. Now, so far in 2023, um, how many innings pitched does he currently have? So he's rocking 10 innings pitched, and uh, he the strikeouts aren't there so far. A 4.9K percentage and a higher walk walk percentage at 7.3. So so far it's been it's been pretty brutal. He gave up three yeah, three and five um, versus the Cardinals, and then only one against the Astros. So he's getting lucky so far. Um, but I think in the, yeah in the deeper league you may have to you may have to roll with them that that last week. But I think. If, if it's very close, just wait on John Means for next year. I think in 2024, it's going to be a good time to revisit him. Um, but I'm kind of I'm, – I'm afraid the blow-up's coming for him. I think um, if I can add on for Means, he I we have him as going up against Cleveland and going up against Boston. On the season, Cleveland is the second-worst team in all of baseball against left-handed pitchers. So mm-hmm. that's a pretty nice matchup. The strikeouts, though, I mean, his, he's not giving up runs. Uh, but as we spoke about in our conversations before, what are the Orioles playing for anymore? Is he really going to be pitching, you know, trying to get six innings for a win? Are you going to get full advantage of that uh, poor Cleveland offense against lefties? I, I'm, I might be with you, but um, but if you have if you have him and and you need a start, Cleveland is a nice nice uh, soft start for a lefty. 
I mean, are any of you guys worried about the fact that he has two strikeouts in 10 innings? Yeah, that was the, yeah, the, his, uh, it was 4.3%, uh, 4.3 K percentage. Yeah, I am. That was one of the things I said. I, I am yeah. worried about that, especially because he has more walks than Ks right now. So he's getting lucky, uh, even though the numbers so far are fine. I mean, you put up one, one earned run against the Astros. That's, you know, five, six innings. That's not too bad, but I think, uh, Art nailed it. They're going to curve. Why would they have them out there five, six inches if they don't need to in the last yeah. week and a half? But um, points leagues, why not? I would start them. Uh, I would think about it twice, though, if I was in a, a standard roto league or head to head category. And obviously, don't expect a win because, again, I think best case scenario is going to give you five, but most likely I don't see them exposing him more than two times through the order. And that's, I think, the best case mm-hmm. scenario there. Mm-hmm. Um, This next guy is not necessarily going to be shortened by innings, I would think, at this point in the season. But Chris Sale against the White Sox and at Baltimore, that at Baltimore matchup might not be as bad as it looks because, like you guys alluded to, at this point in the year, they're not really playing for anything. So they might not get their full lineup consistently down the stretch. They might be giving guys some rest here and there, kind of putting guys in and out. Elsie, Chris Sale... Again, the potential is always there, but he's never been consistent, especially this season. Um, if you're in a pinch in a championship chase here, can you trust him in your lineup? Yeah, I, he, he pitched pretty well against Toronto. I like the matchup against the White Sox. I think the White Sox are are in every, almost every starter. If you, ha- if you feel at all good about them, throw them against the White Sox, and the White Sox are pretty poor against lefties. I like that Baltimore. Um, that's a that's a tough one at Baltimore, though. At least he's going to get a little bit of protection from that uh, that deep wall, the Baltimore mm-hmm. uh, ballpark. Uh, I I think I'd throw Sale out there. He did look pretty good against Toronto his last start out. Yeah, his last start against Toronto, he went pulling up his game log here. Uh, he went six innings, two hits, one earned run, ten strikeouts. A very dominant outing, a very old like vintage Chris Sale outing. But again. The vintage Chris Sale is also paired with the one that went and gave up six earned runs in four innings against Baltimore the outing before. So that's what the inconsistencies you're going to get with Chris Sale. Marty, uh, again, Chris Sale, we've seen the Jekyll and Hyde version. Do you think he gives you something that you can be useful with in his last two starts here? In a 15 roto, I'm excited to have him. I, I think he'll be a good fourth, fifth starter for you. Um, anything lower than that, 10, 12 team leagues, I wouldn't do it. Okay, fair enough. Next player on the list here, someone that kind of has come out of nowhere and had 11 strikeouts in his debut in Sawyer Gibson Long uh, of your Detroit Tigers, Marty, against Dang. at Oakland and Kansas City. I mean, that's about as juicy as you can get. Pretty and again, good. coming in there with 11 strikeouts, I wish I saw what his FanDuel props were for K's that outing because you would have been rich if you had bet double-digit K's in his first outing. Uh but is that, I mean, again, Mark, I don't know how deep you are in the there in the Tigers prospect pool here. I had never heard of him until he was called up. And is that is that strikeout stuff legit from him? Because I think, again, people are going to look at that outing and then be excited to put him in there for these two starts. But should we be? To talk about, it, well, first off, uh, first off, let's talk about his prospect prowess. And there was very, uh, very little, if in any at all, middling prospect, um, we didn't hear you as a fan you don't hear too much about him um when you look over to his his numbers at toledo um which would be triple a the mudheads 34 innings pitched he only and he, he had the 50 strikeouts so you know the strikeouts can be there uh, his changeup is absolutely incredible he doesn't have a problem throwing his secondary pitches in like in a hitter's count so he's keeping the hitters extremely off balance so with his favorable schedule coming up I'm rolling him out there in in my 10 team league, the infamous one. He's a, a first, <laughs> at Oakland. I'm gonna do it. Um, it could blow up in my face, but um, K- Oakland, Casey, what he's shown you, his first two outings out. Um, I'm I'm really excited now. W- where he's gonna be in dynasties in, uh, next year and all that different stuff. That's gonna be uh, cool to look at over the next few months leading into next year. But I'm rolling with him for the rest of the year. He's my man. And I will say this. I probably watch less Tigers games than anybody because I'm emotionally involved. <laughs> and I haven't watched the last, like, unless I go to the game, it's hard for me to watch. So um, it's not like I'm rooting for him in that way. But I, from what I've seen, he's been absolutely incredible. 
Um, it really a shout out to Nick Pollock, another great breakdown he has of him of, of his first uh, it was 11K outing. I would go check that out uh, if you're really into pitching. But yeah, roll him out there. What when is that start against Oakland? Um, let me because I want to say it's got to be soon, right? Yeah, I think it's tomorrow. I wonder if they have his K prop out yet. Because if we could actually guess what it would be. If you had to Man. guess what the over under would be for his K's, I think they would give him five and a half. Friday versus o at Oakland. Oh, Friday. Okay, so they, won't, they won't have that up yet. Yeah, okay. uh, my guess is five and a half. If I that mean, was it, the case, would you smash the over on that, Marty? I guess dude, I'm so bad at gambling. I guess. <laughs> what What would you do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would, to be honest with you, I haven't done any baseball gambling since football started. Um, but I would like to see his minor league numbers go through those a little bit, look at kind of how he pitched in his first outing, just like, you know, how was, was he controlling the zone? Was it just one yeah. of those things that looked mm -hmm. like first time seeing him, but the stuff not being overly impressive. No, the um, stuff looked really good. Really yeah. good. Surprisingly well, good. Well, Especially well, throwing a change up that much. I, I'm looking at his triple A numbers and his double A numbers from this year. And his his triple A was over two home runs per nine. Double mm. A, he was almost 1.7 home runs per nine. Um I do worry about those numbers, but his K's were there in triple and double A. 13 K's per nine in triple A. Uh, 10 and a half and double a this season. I think the K's are, you know, if you're going to do a K prop bet, what will, what would take him out is if he gives up a couple home runs before, uh, before he gets those six Luckily Ks. at the Coliseum though. Yeah. That's good. And Oakland can't hit that well, except for Ryan Noda. That guy's good. Shea so Langoliers. Shea Langoliers is getting, getting hot. So yeah. maybe Friday we'll in our uh, Twitter group chat, Let's uh let's see what the line opens up at. And if all it's right. five if it's five and a half, I think we maybe all might have to bet it. And then we either we ride together or we die together. Yeah, get our how I'm dying with a hundred bucks on Spencer Strider. Thanks for nothing, D Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy though? Is up until so he went last night. I literally had kind of given up on him on the Cy Young. And I go and look on my phone and I see he's gone six shutout or he's gone five shutout innings with one hit allowed and nine strikeouts against the Phillies. His ERA is down to three, six, two. He has eight. He's going, he's going to have 18 was the Phillies are up like, or the Braves are up like nine, zero. He's going to have 18 wins. He's going to have nearly 300 strikeouts. He's going to lead both in baseball by a wide margin. And then I was like, man, if he pitches one more shutout inning, the ERA is going to get to three, five something. So yeah. he has one more start left. And if that ERA got down to like three, like, you know, three high three threes, I was like, it's not ridiculous with 19 wins and nearly 300 strikeouts when no one else is going to have 17. Or it's, good. it's like Nolan Ryan who never like, I'm not, and I hate to compare him to Nolan Ryan, but Nolan Ryan never won the side and he was always leading the league in strikeouts, getting these good win totals. Uh, it, 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 there's definitely a case. And, and anyone who says there's not a case, and I know we had um, fantasy baseball beat, had the great Steve Gardner on yeah, who didn't even put him in their his top three right. for NL Cy Young, which He's I number thought, two. He's number two now, I think two or three, okay. no worse than three. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think there's definitely a good case for him to be the Cy Young award winner. Still, unfortunately, as I looked at that box score, I closed it. And then this guy texts me who's a Braves fan, but it's a Spencer Strider hater. And he said, he, he does, he, yes, it's a long Why? story. Okay. It's a long story. Uh, it's like tight pants. I get it. He disagreed. He doesn't think like that FIP and all the ERA estimators are accurate. He thinks, I mean, Strider's bad. Like, <laughs> Strider's bad. is like 316. And he was like, he texts me when he gives up a home run. He's like, is that unlucky? Cause you said the bad is it's, it's unlucky and it's supposed to be regressive. Is that unlucky? And wow. I, I, get, I, get wow. I get really annoyed. So I didn't literally didn't see that. And then I saw I was, uh, it was six to zero. He had two base runners on with two outs. Put my phone down. And the next thing he texts me and he said, Was that unlucky? And I look and boom, hit a three run homer off of him. Raises the ERA back to three seven. And I <sighs> said, Man, I'm done with this. 
<laughs> my gosh my gosh you know i'm so this is when i'm glad that i don't have a huge twitter following and i don't get snark like that for saying <laughs> stuff this yeah, is why it, i'm glad <laughs> it was crazy but i i was kind of starting to get hopeful also with snell going that night i was like maybe snell doesn't have a great outing and but snell's been unreal even Seven with innings pitch 10 k's i mean no earned he's just ERA's down down to like, it's like two two something now uh, 2.33 yeah, it's 227 strikeouts and 174 innings and still 14 wins. Uh, one, two, three. I think he has nine quality starts in a row. His whip also gone down a little bit. It's still high, but it's 1. not. 2, it was, zero. Yeah, yeah it, was one, it was 1.3, like a few, like four or five outings ago. Yeah, we'll so, see. He, he's got it locked up at this point, but strider's still a monster i think it's just it just thinks that he has some of these blow up outings or when he gives up base runners i think he kind of gets in his head a little bit tries to make the perfect pitch and uh isn't pitching like he does when he's just mowing them down a little more loose but and the last thing i'll about say about the the padres is it's amazing the the tale of two season that snell's having while being extremely lucky in his starts while the padres are extremely unlucky in like one run games and in yep. every everything else so. he's just soaking up all the good luck yeah we didn't want that. <laughs> exactly is it fair to say really quickly andrew abbott is not a, a must start at this point with how he's looked recently i'm starting him this week but i agree yeah is it, yeah i agree I, I wouldn't start Andrew personally. I wouldn't start Andrew. I started Abbott. him over Josiah Gray, and Josiah Gray had a really good outing today. He did. So. He did have a good outing today. Yeah. Uh, really quick, let's, ta let's talk about some hot hitters um, that are right now owned in under thirty percent of leagues. Marty, again, beautiful research done on these. Just say yes or no if you will stream them. If you want to give a little bit of a reason why, if you have one, otherwise you can just you know, say it yes or no. Ryan O'Hearn, Marty. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I got him in um, in Glarf, and even in a 12-team league, he's fully viable because he's going to be playing the rest of the year as they rest guys intermittently. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Art Luis Capuzano. Oh, my gosh, yes, de definitely. Smash the yes on Capuzano. Smash he, it, okay. He's like Hebert yeah. Ruiz, but with a little bit more power, and I think he could be a top 10 catcher going into next year. Look out for him for next year's drafts, yeah. Mm-hmm. Marty Jake Rogers. Hey, another hey, the guy's hitting bombs. He's in a bat 220. He's a big <laughs> boy behind the dish. Um, I'm anyone who's picked him up is ecstatic. Yeah, I'd roll with him the rest of the year. He's going to be playing as much as possible. Elsie, are you on board with that as well? Yeah, he's the guy who I looked at half the season going, I need a catcher. Should I pick him up? Nah. And now it's like, I should have picked him up. What about CES and Christian Encarnacion Strand? Part of the, I feel like a lot of Reds have been very hot and cold the second half of the season, LC. It's his turn to be the hot red rookie, and he is. He hit another home run today, I think. Yeah, he hit another home run today. I'm, Marty. I'm yeah, is, um, if you're playing in a, a daily league, yes. Uh, you still got to worry about if he's going to play every day because it looks like he plays two, he sits two, plays two, sits one. Um, but other than that, I would be rolling them out there. What about our next guy here in uh, uh, Tyrone Taylor of the Milwaukee Brewers, who I feel like he's actually good when he's healthy and he's inconsistently, and he's showing that right now. Are you in or are you out, Marty? <sighs> That's a good question, D-Man that, that one I'm struggling with. Now he's, now he's up to bat in sixth. He hit another home run today. I got to be in. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, Milwaukee with with uh, with um, with uh, uh, Yelich playing sparingly now down the stretch. Yeah, bat problems. Uh, Taylor's been really well. I picked him up last weekend in one of my leagues, and because I needed outfielders, and he went right into my lineup. I'm just glad to hear he hit a home run. Yeah, as one someone famous once said, he's hotter right now than your favorite Instagram model. <laughs> That is Tyrone Taylor. Uh, I won't, I'll shout out Sleepy K Mike Curlin because I was uh, looking on Twitter just for his recent sample size. Uh, this was uh, two days ago, but since August or since yeah since August first, Tyrone Taylor became an everyday player. Five home runs and two stolen bases. I know he just hit a homer today, so that's definitely six homers now. A two ninety three thirty three five forty two triple slash 
a 370 Woba, 133 WRC plus, and a 252 ISO, 91% Z contact. A lot of great numbers. So Tyrone Taylor looks very much worth the ad here. The last player we'll talk about for the hitters list here, and that is going to be, uh, oops, I closed the Should table. be Ramon Liriano, right? Yes, Ramon Liriano. Yeah, he's playing almost every day. He's it's hard to he's either going to hit you a home run and a stolen base in a stolen base or he's going to go over for four. So again, I think yeah. in a um, in a deeper league, yeah, in a in a ten twelve team, I'm still not comfortable. He's pretty mad to me. Yeah, he's got the playing time. So if you need someone who's getting abs, put him out there. But I, I wouldn't be anxious to pick him up. I believe the kids these day are calling them those players mid. They're mid. Yeah, mm, yeah, that's right. That's why I need you here. <laughs> I'm here to educate you, man. Thank you. Keep you hip. Um, so obviously, if, if you guys have questions with certain players to pick up down the stretch here, of course, always can find us on Twitter at RTPF, at Marty underscore Tallman, at DMNDO2. Uh, well, of course, specific questions can help you down the stretch here. But those are some... Shout out really to them. Shout out to all of the, the homies that are still hitting me up and they're still <laughs> checking in on the podcast and all that stuff. You guys are... You're why we do it, man. I love yeah. that. Like still every day I'm popping there. If you, Hey, would you start this person or this person? I'm like, man, this guy is in it. It's awesome. Yeah. And again, appreciate you guys that I'm sure hopefully are watching the show as well. Cause hopefully we can answer those for you and save you the trouble. Uh, but again, we're always here to answer and, and be uh, with you guys to help you win your fantasy championships. With that being said though, Let's get to what the thumbnail is saying. Let's get Let's to talk about little, video games. <laughs> Let's talk about video games, man, because I think fantasy and gaming kind of go hand in hand. And I know sometimes we uh, don't always talk about gaming specifically on this show, but I feel like as we're kind of winding down and getting ready to start off-season content, it's a fun little way to, that we make our show different and talk different topics. So I want to kick it off. And of course, I'm not even going to mention the game yet. I want the the audience, if you're on the podcast feed, even if, or if you're watching and you just listen to this beautiful, beautiful intro. It's, it's in the game. Lance Berkman, Houston Astros. It's in the game. MVP Baseball 2005. Ready? So, did you guys, all everybody here played MVP baseball? Of course. Mm -hmm. Art, did you? A little bit. A little bit. Mm, I don't feel I, a passion. I had no, a game. He, I had a GameCube. The oh, GameCube was that. That was yeah. the. I, and it's where I played it on too. Yeah. Oh, it was on GameCube. Yeah. yeah. I know PS2 yeah. was was big for it, but uh, yeah, the GameCube also. Yeah, we had a. I had on Xbox the for original Xbox nice. too. Um, I think this is what this is like the uh, the video game that changed baseball games. Uh, just the way that you like how you would hit, just fielding the ball. Uh, the, the commentary was legendary. With uh, John Crook, or I'm sorry, with uh, Mike Rucco and Dwayne Kuyper. Um, I mean, the music, the soundtrack, everything soundtrack. about this game is is just lit. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously this is hopefully taking you down memory lane. Um, is there an argument that there's a better baseball game than this? Well, I wanted to start off with celebrating what MVP baseball did so well that no one else was doing. Number one, you could literally create your own stadium. And I don't mean this half-ass Madden stadium. I'm talking about everything from making it seven, eight, nine hundred feet with the uh, with like two um, big uh, green monsters stacked on top of each other. All of the incredible mini games that I would sit there as a 15 year old and 16 year old and just play them constantly. Those are absolutely incredible. The hitter's eye being able to see. You know, a green pitch, oh, change up's coming. Red, fastball, blue, off speed, or whatever it is. That was absolutely incredible. And the soundtrack was immaculate. I feel like there was a good stretch with the A Sports there for those three, four years where, like, you would look forward to the soundtrack. Like, I remember going to the menu and being like, oh, this song's on there. This song's on there. Mm -hmm. Something that we don't ever get ever again. Um, <laughs> so, um, absolutely. 
And for our audience that are watching on YouTube, I'm also going to give you guys a treat as we are breaking this down and talking about it here. I, I want to just, I'm going to have a, one of the games actually just playing in the background. No sound, uh, but you'll be able to uh, be able to just kind of watch it as we're talking about it, take you down memory lane here. One LC, of, one of the things say, that I like, go ahead. Real Mark. quick, click on Jeremy Campbell. That's a, that's a buddy of mine I grew up with. And I still, I see him sneaking in there to talk some crap. Okay. First off, you got the game wrong. It was World Series Baseball 1998. Okay. <laughs> and I made the mistake, and I'm sure you guys have done this before. I'm talking crap, right? For two, three days, I'm saying how good I am at World Series 98. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You're not going to beat me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we go to uh, play the game at my, my parents' house as a, as a young lad would, and he absolutely destroyed me. Home run after home run, gappers, stealing bases, this, 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 and that. In a fit of rage, I broke my uh, my Sega Genesis. That, <laughs> oh my, that is a classic. That is a classic uh, head-to-head story. I think Stop the. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think that's awesome. <laughs> Throwing the controller, that yeah. old that old chestnut from from the teenage years. The thing that I think I really like as I look at this again. Uh, they haven't really improved on the uh, sliding bar pitch uh, pitch thing with on um, that they did in in World Series 05. I believe the show was doing that, and they might still be doing that sliding bar mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, pitch accuracy thing that that mm-hmm. was begun with this game, and uh, and it was at the time it was it was really an impressive uh, improvement over what had been. You know, my favorite game was Ken Griffey Jr. for Super Nintendo, which was just so much fun because, you know, you know, it was kind of easy to hit a home run, too, on Ken Griffey Jr., which was always, you know, you play against your friends and you knew it was a home run because the ball would just zoom. You would, like, fast forward out of the ballpark on Ken Griffey Jr. Um, so, like, that always has a special place in my park heart. But uh, World uh, MVP Baseball, I think – uh, the the game playability, like I played full seasons on this, um, you know, where we would put our teams together, play full seasons because we wanted to see what stats we could pull up in a full season of baseball, playing it on the video game, you know, 70 some home runs with some guy or what have you, you know, it was a, it was a ton of fun. You would build your monster teams and uh, bring the Cubs to the World Series, you know, 10 years early. Yeah, I think it was it was really cool because you real life team might be frustrating, but you would be able to take your team to where they wanted to go. Um, I know when I played this game that I first of all, before actually I get to that point, did you guys do manual fielding or did you let it be the uh, assisted fielding? I mean, manual. Yeah, sure. I always did the assisted. I always like I did the throws, but I let the computer get to the ball. No, that's half the fun. What about like the shots and and that's what they did so well and like gaps in, like between third and second, like the shortstop going to the hole and getting the ball Jeter style. Like you could do all those different types of things, and it didn't look like they would automatically speed up. It was actually they would build up to the ball, get it, and then you'd be able to make a strong throw from your knees, which throwing from your knees was new too. That's another thing that they they got. But I also wanted to, uh, I got a list here because you said. To say this is one of the best base or the one of the best games of all time, I think is crazy. What? It's one of the, the one of the you said one of the greatest video games of all it time. It is. I think that's that's a little much. I think it's I think it's the best baseball game of all time. And maybe it could be maybe I guess Jeremy was the Braves. I thought you were the Giants. But anyway, um, but here here's some other ones on my list: Ken Griffey Jr. Major League Baseball for Super Nintendo. Shout out to uh, Art uh, World Series Baseball '98. The one that I uh, lost in to my buddy uh, Frank Thomas, Big Hurt Baseball for Sega, and then the Good show one. 2010 with Joe Maurer on the cover. That was another. Those are some other great, great baseball games. But uh, MVP 05 is definitely the go. I didn't play the show uh, with Joe Maurer on it. I don't think I really got into it twice. Twice. I played triple play baseball. That was good. Mm. Um, one of the things I used to like doing in this game a lot was I would create an entire team. Not just like create myself. Nice. But I would do like, I'd pick a team with the best jersey. So it might be Oakland. It might be Pittsburgh, whoever. I'd make an entire, every position player. It might be like, I would just like look at first and last names. And I would just pair make random ones. So it might be like, you know, Gary Cameron. Or it might be like, uh, 
you know, uh, Joe, like something. I don't know. But I would like create guys. I would be like, all right, this guy's not going to be a great hitter, but he's going to have a great arm, stuff like that. Uh, then I would make an entire starting staff. One guy would be just like a breaking ball pitcher. Fastball would be like a 70. A real then I would make a, an absolute, <laughs> I would make an absolute flamethrower that didn't have as much control. I would make I like um, that, man. That, yeah, that's back when you can spend eight hours a night playing video games. Exactly. Game. So it would be like <laughs> really, it would take an entire day to like make your team. I would do two, two relief pitchers and a closer. So I would do three total relievers. So at, at the end of the day, it would probably end up being like, 15 16 players i'd make yeah and we'd start the year and then you watch their like stats start accumulating and you're like oh man my closer xavier reyes is gone <laughs> is you know three and oh this year with a 0.7 era but like 15k for nine it was just so cool um, i'll tell you that what i did not like is when you would ask your buddy hey you doing a season yeah i, I sim I, I sim every couple you know every couple oh, games i no. said nothing worse you're not you cannot simulate if i simulated a single game that season does not count i'm playing a 162 yes and i'm gonna win the world series yes god nothing made me more uh more upset than that i can't people did that that's wild yeah oh i only want to pitch with this pitcher so i only play his game dude i, I heard it all man i don't, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> So I thought what might also be fun with this is start reading you guys some of the rosters in this game just Ooh, nice. to bring some nostalgia back to you. I'm not going to read every single name, of course, but just some relevant <laughs> names. Um, so like going through the Angels, do you guys remember uh, Kelvin Escobar, the starting pitcher? No. I'll you don't remember honest. Kelvin Escobar? No. Sounds like a nice guy, though. Man, Mar we're going to be <laughs> testing some baseball knowledge here. Um, of course, K-Rod. Yes. Yep. You guys remember Garrett Anderson? Yeah. Yeah, Angel. Yeah. What about Jared Washburn? Yep. The pitcher, right? For yeah. Seattle? He was, uh, he was Seattle. also on the Angels, yeah. Yeah. He was on Seattle before the pit Angels, I think. John Lackey? Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Big Lack. Uh, two, uh, he won the championship in 2004, right? Yes. Was he on that team? I think He was so. also on the Cubs 2016 championship team. They also had a former Cleveland great Paul Bird. Yeah. And Orlando Cabrera is on this team. I won't read yeah. all of these guys. Um, Kevin Gregg and Casey Kochman. Kevin Gregg with the glasses. Love yep. it. Then he, he fought. Who did he try to fight? I don't know. I wouldn't fight Ke Kevin Gregg. It was Gregg when he was the fight. Orioles. It, was, it might have been Ortiz. Oh, David Ortiz? Yeah, it was when he was Kevin Gregg was with the Orioles. That's two big know. boys. That's two big boys. Yeah. I, I you have to YouTube it, but I remember there's there. Tim um, Sam. <laughs> what about uh Troy Gloss? You might remember him. Of course. 40 was home another angel? Oh, no, I'm I'm not gonna like uh I won't go like say, oh, this is now the, the diamond bat. I'm just gonna read his names. Mm. Um Brandon Webb. Of course. Man, Brandon Webb was the goat. Uh Craig Council, now manager Craig Council. Mm-hmm. See, we also got Edgar Gonzalez. Actually, no, I don't remember him as much. Um, no. Alex Cintron, who is now also yes. was the manager. Uh, the Harrison Twins. Oh, yeah. We also have, of course, I'm not going to read like the, the names that everybody knows. I'm, I'm trying to go a little different here. Uh, Mike Hampton. Of course. Mike Hampton. Former Detroit Tiger for a season. Mm -hmm. Raphael for call. Mm -hmm. Loved for call. For call was... Uh, was Maddox called him the best athlete on the team when in his uh, pitching ninja interview. Oh, really? Yeah. He was a cardinal, right? For call was a brave. Oh, okay. yeah. And, and then the maybe a card, Memory. maybe maybe a cardinal after world. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Raul Mondesi. Of course. of course, yes. Mount the original Mondesi. Yes. Uh, Julio Franco. <laughs> Dude, Still shout playing. out to him. Lena, <laughs> he's sixty-four years old. Rips. He played forever. Remember his batting in the Cuban game? League? I, he might still be playing, honestly. I wouldn't hold I'm <laughs> Great batting me. stance, though. Yeah, all-time great Put batting hands stance. Up. Dude, yeah. Crazy. Uh, Ryan Langerhands. Remember him? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a real name. <laughs> remember the, what was the game we played where it was like a real player or player I made up? Oh, that one of the games. We had to come up. We were, I've never. We were doing, I didn't. I was that. not around for that. that I think fun. we did do that one. That was. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was a good time. Um, you guys remember um, Miguel Tejada? Of course, of course, yeah. MVP Tejada. Yep. Steroids Melvin Mora. Tejada. Who? 
Melvin Mora. Moore. Yeah. Mm, no. Orioles. Yep. Sydney Ponson. <laughs> Another <laughs> Oriole. Sounds like a great lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> BJ Ryan, the closer. Yes. Former Blue Jay as well. Um, who else? Brian Roberts. Yeah, Brian Roberts. Um, you really are. Right, you got to weigh in. Are you, did you play video games growing up or a lot or, you know? My my uh, my mom was anti video games. Well, shout so, out to her. That's a good mother. So was mine. So, I still uh, had it. So uh, so I was I was closed off from video games till I was in my teenage years when she finally <laughs> re- relented. So to say, David, why do you 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 tell me you give me the case for why MVP MVP baseball is one of the best video games of all time? I, mean, I think it'd be easier to tell you why it's why. It, isn't you, the best. You, or, you, <laughs> you tell me whatever you think is going to change my mind. Because I, I, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Like you said, you can create stadiums. You mm-hmm. can, I, I think it, it, the whole gameplay changed how baseball games were played. You know, like you said, the, the meter for pitching. I feel like I the directional hitting, like I've, I don't remember the other games being able to control exactly where you can hit the ball. As much like if they throw it up and in, you're going up and in with the stick and, and meeting it up there, or if That's it true. was like down and away to be able to to hit it and like kind of poke it away for like a down the gap double, like I really feel like I had the control to really hit where I wanted to hit. Um, I feel like they did a really good job with the rosters. I actually was on with uh, the ITL guys today, and I I brought I told me we were going to be talking about this game, and the Welsh said that the um they actually have the top 100 prospects in this game. But they just don't have them by name. But they have all their stats. Oh, that's cool. So he's like, you know, like, I forgot. Uh, he said like Carlos Quinton was one of the top Diamondback prospects at the time. So if you go in the Diamondback system, Carlos Quinton is there. It's just he's he's not Carlos Quinton. It's just a different guy. Could you then like upload ro- like rosters to this? T- you remember how you used to be able to do that with like Madden? Like yeah, like go to the community and like upload rosters. I wonder if you. Maybe someone, there's some simulator somewhere where people are playing 2023 guys on this in MVP 05. If that would so, be shout tight. out to me. Yeah, uh, yeah I want to, I want, I want to play that. Um, but what are like super, like Super Smash Brothers? You know, the Call of Duty, the Grand Theft Autos, the the Mario. You know, all of those. This this trumps them all. Mm-hmm. All right, there I, you go. I'm convinced. I mean, again, like it, it's different, like. When you say like best video games of all time, it's like it's hard to cross genres of like sure. of like okay, like this compared to Super Smash, compared to Golden Eye, compared to whatever you want to say. But like, I, I think it's easy just to kind of say like I think it's the best vid- baseball video game of all time, and it's and it goes in that. the list of like iconic video games of our generation. I sign off completely on that. Um. Did you guys know? I just actually looked at the rosters and we're looking at this now. So you guys know what what Barry Bonds was called in this game, right? John Doe. John Snow? Or, no, not John Snow. Uh, <laughs> That's game John. Just, it's D O D O. John Dowd. John Dowd. John Dowd. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that Kevin Millar is not in this game? No. Kevin Millar. I did not. I know the name, but no. His name was Anthony Fries. That's him on the screen right here. Did that that really did that time? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's him. Good timing. Yeah, I guess because there are certain players that would um didn't sign off on the, I, I forgot how it was. It worked yeah. where they could players use, association. Yeah, the MLBPA. Yeah. Like they were just like no, they don't think they, they didn't think they got enough money. That's why like Rasheed Wallace has never been in a two K. You know, it's a bummer. It's a yeah. bummer for everybody. It is kind of interesting, um, but yeah, that's why all the minor league guys don't aren't in there, and they have different names. Uh, Marty, if I were to read you the Detroit Tigers roster, will, will I take you down memory lane here? Yeah, let, let's. I wonder if I can even name a few. Yeah, uh, right, yeah let's do, let's see if you can name them. So we'll go by position. Okay. Uh, t- 2004. Uh, Brandon Inge at third. Is that uh, too early? Yes, Brandon Inge at third. Okay. Uh, Ozzy or er, uh, Car- Carlos Guillen, shortstop. Yes. Um. It was before Verlander, uh, maybe like a Jeremy Bonderman or you know s- someone like that for like a starting pitcher. Um, Bonderman was a starting pitcher. Yep. Todd Jones closer. Yes, Todd Jones uh, was one of the relievers. Closer. All right. Let me uh, first base. I think by that time Tony Clark's out. Uh, Dean you Palmer. Know this, Marty. 
No, you know this, Marty. You know both of them. Carlos Pena? Yes, he's one. There's another one? Uh... Yes. There's one that you're going to really kick yourself if you don't remember this one. The Detroit Tiger. Man, I must be really... There's people screaming at me right now. I can uh... tell you the team he played for after the Tigers. You might get it. All right, hit me with it. The Nationals. First baseman? It's not Sean Casey, right? The Mead Hook. The Ooh. S. Yes. Who? Tell me. Dimitri Young. Oh, D. Young. Three home runs on opening day in 2005. <laughs> Shout out to him. Do you, yeah. remember, do you remember the starting second baseman? Uh, Fernando Vina? Uh, it was... Or Placido Plantos? I think it was before Placido. No. You, I'll be impressed if you remember this name. I wouldn't if I didn't look at it. I don't know. Omar Infante. Oh, Omar, yeah. Atlanta Brave, and then he came back to us. Yep. And then, do you remember the outfield? No, I think that's where I... This, is Bobby Higginson still on the team at this point? Yes, he... he's on the team. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Higginson, man. That's a Tigers legend. Um, you have to get one. If you don't get one. one, we're not friends anymore. I just got one. No, no, you have to get this specific one. An outfielder for the Detroit Tigers in 2003 because... The rosters came out, uh, or 2004. I don't know. Marty. Give me a hint. Who? Who are, who are some of the best Tigers of all time? Curtis Granderson? Uh, that's, what I, just, that's what I was thinking of. I'm no. Just, he's not, but I'm trying to guess around. Uh, best Tigers of all time. You're, you're forgetting a gigantic one. Please, someone it was in the chat or that's watching YouTube or uh, on the podcast version. Do you know Juan Gonzalez? Why? Detroit Tiger, huh? No, Juan Gonzalez was 2000. Did, is, Marty. Is, is, is it Maglio? Yes, Maglio oh, Ardonez. Okay. Come on, Marty. That's yeah, your yeah, guy. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah, batting 363 one year. That was uh, incredible. Walk-off home run uh, for Oakland to send us to the World Series. Mm -hmm. Sorry, buddy. I forgot about you. I love the hair. They also have uh, Na uh, Nate Robertson was on this team. <laughs> Nasty Nate. Now, you threw me off by saying he Maglio Ardonez is one of the best Tigers of all time. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> See that one year. He was really good, but he's not, you know, he's, he's not on the wall. Oh, uh, we might have to have a debate another day for that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Ivan Rodriguez on this team, of course. Oh, yes, all fans. Uh, nice. Rondell White. Yeah, he was all right. Uh, Mike Marath. Yeah, pitcher. <laughs> Man, that team stunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Art, the same thing is going to you uh, for the Chicago Cubs. Okay, I think it's Derek Lee, the first baseman. Uh, well, let me get to their roster. Yeah, he was like a triple crown. Canada yeah, I remember years. that. That's when I first started following. Yeah, Derek Lee was the first baseman. Mark Gretzelanek at second. Uh, second baseman. There's one. It's not no. Mark Gretzelanek? No. Ryan Saber? I see. Aramis Ramirez was the third baseman. Yes. Um. Uh, Sammy Sosa's in the outfield. Uh, Corey Patterson probably is in the outfield. Corey Patterson is, Sammy Sosa is not. What? I mean, unless they gave him a different name. but uh, He might have been. No, he was still on the Cubs. Maybe he was on Texas by then. He's not he on, on this list. Uh, see, is Fred McGriff the first uh, on the team still? No, he was. he's not. Uh, we brought Fred McGriff in one year. Um, uh, so the pitching staff, you got Pryor and Wood probably still on the, on the team then. Yes. Um, uh, Carlos Zambrano is the ace. Yes. Matt Clement also on the pitching staff. Uh, no, no Matt, Matt Clement starting pitcher. Yeah. He would have been a starting pitcher. No. He might've been on Boston by then. Um, that's tough. I'm Craig trying to Maddox remember. was on it too. Maddox, yeah, because we got him in 04, and not a nine, no, 04, after after he came over from after we lost in 03, we signed Maddox for the 04 season. So, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, you're not going to get the last two. It's Glendon Rush. Glendon Rush, yeah. And also Sergio Mitre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember Sergio. the name. Don't remember much about Sergio Mitre. Uh, yeah, so. Do you remember any other guys? Um, you should know the closer. The closer? Yes. Joe Borowski? 
No. I could show you a demonstration with my hands and you would know who it is. Oh gosh, I I don't know. What's that? No idea what that is. He did this with his glove. Oh, oh to hide the pitch? Yep. He used to hide the pitch that way. I can't remember who it is now. Was Carlos Sambrano, was he named? Yeah, he already got him. Uh, Jason okay. Grilly was not on this roster. I don't know well for Vinny which one that was, uh, he was referencing. Ronnie Cedeno, Glennon Rush. Nice. Oh, you Jason really not remember? You really not remember it? The guy who used to – oh, oh, Ryan Dempster. There you Dempster, go. Yeah, Dempster, yeah. Ryan Dempster. Yeah. He didn't start doing that till later in his career when he realized he was tipping his pitches. Yeah. So um, he used to – yeah. Yeah, Dempster. We also, got uh, we got Kyle Hendricks for Ryan Dempster. Did you really? In a trade, yeah. Yeah. That was a good trade for us. The gift that keeps giving. Yeah. You, got, um, you had uh, LaTroy Hawkins in his bullpen. LaTroy Hawkins. Good bullpen piece. Yeah. You also had uh, Nomar Garcia Parra as a shortstop. Oh, man. Nomar. Oh, Noma. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that was a, we, he, he hit, he hit well for us in his short time with, with the squad, but he was only with us for like a half a season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, I guess, I mean, you guys remembered a good amount of them, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it was, that was, that was a pretty, the O three 3 team was, uh, was an easily memorable team and, uh, a lot of the same guys were still there. So I was just guessing a lot of the guys I could remember from 03. I see Mike Bellhorn is on Boston already, or else I, and Bill, I would have guessed him. But uh, on the game you're playing. Should also be uh, rookie Matt Merton, Ryan Terrio, and Mike Fe uh Yeah, Mike Fontenot. Uh, yeah. God, if it, Rich Hill, yeah. yeah, I guess these are all like, uh, at that point, they were... Uh, Rich Hill. Yeah. Yeah, they were like in their uh, AAA. How old was Vinny when this was going on? Vinny, 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 don't, don't ever trust Vinny. Doubt his knowledge, man. Vinny's a I, I, no, I don't doubt him. I just didn't know he was alive during this time. Vinny is a machine. <laughs> yeah, he's a Cubs fan uh, too. Shout out to Vinny. Oh, I forgot yeah, about okay. that. That, that right. definitely makes sense. Yeah, yeah it all makes sense. Shout out yeah. to Vinny, dude. You're fucking. You're, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're really got. Hey, it's the last mode. season of the week. I'll say what yeah. I want. He's the man. <laughs> um. I don't know why the White Sox roster always intrigues me at this time. It, like it was Frank Thomas, Paul. Because they Camarico. won the championship. They won the World Series that, that year. That's, that's yeah. why that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. AJ Prezinski behind the dish. Freddie Garcia, Mark Burley, Paul Canerco, Jermaine Dye, Aaron Rowan. Uh, that pitching staff was what won them the World Series. Their starters were amazing in the playoffs. Yeah, they really were. Jose Contreras, remember him? Yeah, they destroyed us for years. It sucked. The Twins also, I mean, obviously this was like the peak Twins, Twins days when I was really a huge fan. Um, I could name you a lot of their roster without looking at it, but there are some I definitely like, oh man, I remember him. Um, you guys remember Jason Kubel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was, um, I forgot what they, his nickname was. Of course, Johan Santana, Brad Rodkey, Boof Bonzer. Uh, Boof bon one of the best names in baseball. That's, a good, that's yep. a good baseball name. Uh, they also had who else in their rotation? They had uh, Terry Maholland. Yes, yes. Joe Mays. Yeah. Uh, but Jared got uh, Maholland <laughs> looked like an old man in the game already. I can't imagine what he looks like now. Yeah, Maholland was on the the Phillies team that lost to the Blue Jays in the World Series. He'd been around. Mm -hmm. He was a vet by then. And then uh, Carlos Silva. Yeah. He was awful once he got to Seattle. <laughs> Silva has the record for fewest walks per nine innings in a full season. That's right. The, the record, um, which is incredible. Shout out to this team because I believe one Rincon was on our show. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say there was, I thought there was, might have been one other person. Was Denard uh, Span on that team? No, this was right before Denard Span. I think Denard Span was like 2006. 2007. We've had Denard on. We had a few relief. I think we had another relief pitcher from that team. On. We had um, we had uh, um, Matt Garza on too. Garza, yeah, yeah. We were the relief pitcher podcast for a while. That's right. 
with uh, Matt Caps, Chad Cordero, um, Juan Rincon. Who else? Uh, we also had JJ Puts. JJ Puts. We had a uh, Ty. Uh, Ty Butchery. Ty Butchery's twice. That's yeah, you're right. We had Ty Butchery on twice. Man, we gotta get back to those good old days. <laughs> yeah, none of those are, have been done really since I've been on board. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Like scaring them away? The pandemic made it easier for baseball players to That's get true. on this show. They had a lot more free time. <laughs> Shout out to John Dowd. Yeah, John Dowd, the legend. Um, yeah, we have to try to start getting more players back on. I actually talked to Denard, but he's been so busy that uh, yeah, he hasn't been able to. We haven't been able to make it work. But uh, no, that was cool. We'll have to to do all that stuff again. Um, as we ride into the off season though, guys, any type of content that you would like to see in the off season, of course, we're going to do some roster review or some position reviews, position previews. We're going to talk about our hits and our misses. We're going to talk about potential breakouts for next season, everything all under the sun, honestly. But, um, if there's something specific you guys would like to see, please make sure to let us know. Cause that's obviously content we want to focus going forward. Also, next year, we're going to, again, as we try to do every single season, we're going to try to revamp the show. We take what we did good, what we did bad, and we try to make a better product for you the following season. So any suggestions for future types of segments you guys would like to see in season also is very helpful. Uh, and then, of course, if you're on YouTube, a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel is always appreciated. Or a review on your favorite podcasting platform. Uh, gentlemen, is there anything you would like to say to our audience before we get out of here? Because we ended up actually having a pretty normal length of a show. <laughs> so it all was pretty uh, worked I, out the other day. I am not surprised. But no, shout out to everybody still listening, still grinding. Um, you know, we, we do this for you. Fantasy baseball is a ton of fun, but man, it is exhausting. So having the community and having buddies you can reach out to and, um, and everything like that, that's what it's all about. So good luck this week. To everybody, because if you're listening, you're probably in the championship. So uh, keep on keep it all moving. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, everyone, in your in your uh, in your last week week and a half of fantasy baseball. Keep the focus up. Win those championships. Let us know if you win. Let's go championship, baby. Championship or bust. Let us know when you win those championships. But until then, for Marty, for a little cheesecake, I'm Demendi. We're gonna make like a bread truck, and we're gonna haul these buns. Talk to you guys next week.